Uh, hi, my name is Jerry Hesch from the Hesch Institute. And this is a case, uh, this is a demonstration of symphysial diastasis from birth trauma, a new model. And this is from the Hesch Institute, which is near Las Vegas, Nevada. It's in Henderson, Nevada. We do a small amount of clinical work, research, writing, product development, and education. So I want to show on the model here with pregnancy and, and the process of birth, what happens in the pelvic joints. You have two sacroiliac joints, uh, deep from the back, very deep in here, and then you have a symphysis pubis joint. So there's three joints there that participate. And a hormone named relaxin uh, interacts with some of the other pelvic hormones, creating softening of these ligaments such that as the baby grows, the pelvis is able to widen and accommodate that growth. So the pelvis actually gets bigger during pregnancy. And as the baby moves from the upper pelvic portion to the lower, called the outlet. This is called the inlet in the top, and baby's up here. And as baby starts to descend during birth process, comes down to the outlet. The goal of Mother Nature is to maximize the space. Okay, so the baby can be born and mother's not too traumatized, uh, can function and take care of the baby. So here is a picture of that process. And as you see in the green arrow here, this is the sacrum. Okay, it's an oblique view. And the top of the sacrum goes forward because baby has already descended down towards the outlet. And so if the top of it goes forward, the bottom of the sacrum goes backwards. That's the green arrow. And I'll show it to you on the model in a short while. The two ilia, iliac bones, fold inward. Okay, again, baby moved down so we can decrease space there. And what happens then is the sit bones move outward. So that creates more lateral dimension. So let me show you that on the model. The sacrum, which is this big bone, five fused vertebrae, kind of triangle shaped, it moves forward. And so you can see that the dimension inside that increases. Okay? And the paired iliac bones go inward. And you can see how that makes the bottom move outward. Okay, a little bit forward and definitely outward. And you can also see that the symphysis pubis gets compressed at the top. But at the bottom, there's an arch ligament designed to stretch out. And that's where that process happens. Now, when you get the pelvis in this position, it cannot continue to do this process indefinitely. It runs out of room. The top of the pubic joint gets compressed and both sacroiliac joints get compressed. So in those examples where baby is too big for the birth canal, okay, and the canal dimensions have been maximized, there's basically no more motion available. You know, if I were to try to spread these sit bones laterally, it just can't because that pubic joint is maximally compressed, okay? It's at its end range. The ability of the ilia to fold in is at its end range. Um, the abil ability of the sacrum to move forward, to bend forward so that the bottom goes backwards is at its end range. This is an example where sometimes you get a traumatic rupture of that pubic joint. And what I am suggesting is that the mechanics of that injury are very different. And if you play with this model, you'll see how it has to become very different in order to gain range. Because again, these joints are all compressed at end range, so these can't separate anymore at the bottom. So what I suggest is when this fully ruptures, the pubic joint, the pubic bones move outward, but they actually move forward and out. So it's more like a cam motion. It's a little difficult to demonstrate here, but it's uh, like there's a vertical axis way back near the SI joint, and that ilium, that, that hemipelvis, moves forward and out, and then it glides backwards. 
the backwards gliding is a key concept. And if I tear that, and if we, we play with this model, and we bring it these forward and out, that does in fact maximize, it further increases the pelvic dimension. So I do believe that Mother Nature has designed that, or that that is how the pelvis uh, responds when it needs that additional space. So I want to show it to you one more time. What I'm suggesting is that when the pelvis has run out of space, and the joints cannot increase anymore, then what happens is that the pubic joints rupture and the ilia moves forward and outward. So I hope you can see the swinging out of, of the pubic bone. Let's look at the right one first, okay? So I suggest that when the rupture happens, it doesn't just widen like this. Okay, it actually widens by swinging outward. The pubic bone is going forward and outward to the right, and the left one does the same thing, and then they glide backwards. In gliding backwards, the front of the SI joint is open, and it almost creates a posterior joint. That is the phenomenon that I'm talking about, and I think it's very important when it comes to treatment. I have seen this in several studies in which they show CAT scan images of people with severe symphyseal diastasis. So this is 4.7, Brilliant Orthopedist Kowalk, 1996, published this significant widening there. And down here is six and a half months later where the, where the person is this closer. Uh, it's only 1.5 centimeters and uh, you can see the bone development they're trying to stabilize that. So some of these people will recover, that's the important key, but then some do not recover. Those are the ones I'm interested. This is the very same person, okay? See that same author, Kowalk, it's the very same person, and here you see where both SI joints are open. You know, this spreading here, and the ilia have come backwards, and created a new retroarticular joint. Um, and then here you can see that the, the sacrum looks to be anterior to the ilia. So that is what motivated me to start this research project. And here is just one more image where you see that more on one side. This is the widening of that pubic joint. That's the diastasis. And I don't see any number on it. And down here, and this is by an author named Krieg, and here you see the widening of the SI joint distinct, and you don't see the image of the symphysis pubis in this transverse view, it's just too high up. But this one looks like you could simply compress it and it would heal, but look at this side. Can you see how, how much anterior this sacrum has done? The sacrum is kind of rotated to the, to the left. And so what I'm suggesting is that treatment of this person, unlike most of these case studies, in which a compressive belt succeeded. My proposal is that if it does not succeed, the missing piece might be that this ilium, the right half of the pelvis, might need to be glided forward. And after it glides forward, it may then have much more ability for the lower part of the symphysis pubis to come back together, and then Mother Nature would heal it with scar tissue. I'm interested in looking in that, through in that chronic population that has not recovered from a traumatic birth injury, from a rupture of the pubic joint called symphyseal diastasis. I'm curious to test the mobility in an anterolateral direction, multiple angles, to see if mobility is restricted, and certainly CAT scan images would be so helpful to see if that is how they present. And I think that they can be treated. I think that you can use a fulcrum, um, perhaps a dense foam fulcrum positioned appropriately and positioned with a compressive belt and maintained for a long period of time. And I don't know if we're talking five minutes, a half hour, two hours. 
I really don't know. We're at the beginning of this research. And what's remarkable is all, all, in all these studies, you know, no mention of that displacement of sacrum being relatively forward and the ilia coming back. Um, that has not been mentioned. The only things the article mentioned is the definite widening in the SI joint and the definite widening in the symphysis pubis joint. So I'm going to stop right here. I'm working on a paper on the project and we'll probably do several videos. Um, if you should have a client with this, uh, if you're a clinician and you have a client with this, uh, we, please contact us if interested. And if you're a, uh, a person who has this problem and it's chronic and symptomatic, uh, you may also contact us. Thank you very much.